Hi everyone. In this video we're going to be working with antiderivatives and indefinite integration. Now this is pretty much the inverse of finding a derivative. Anytime you see this symbol right here, this is what you call an integral, but it lets us know it's an antiderivative. We're going to be working backwards from when we had to find derivatives. So when you see the symbol, it's going to give you a hint to find an antiderivative. And this equation right here, anytime you find an equation inside the integral, that is your derivative. Because what we're trying to do is we're trying to go back to the original equation. We're trying to work backwards, trying to find f of x. And anytime you see dx or dt, d any letter, it's in respect to that letter. In this case, with respect to x. So we're only going to find the antiderivative of something that has an x. So we're going to take a look at a couple of examples. The first example is what happens when you have a number. What happens when we want to find the antiderivative of just a constant, of just 4, with respect to x? Because we want to find the antiderivative of x with respect to x, anytime you have a number, just add the variable next to it, 4x. How do I know I'm right? What is the derivative of 4x? Just 4, which is inside. But once you find your equation, your original equation, you have to make sure that you add a c. And the reason why we add that c is because we don't know what number was there before. Because no matter what, anytime we want to find this derivative, this c is going to vanish. So anytime you find an antiderivative, you have to add that constant, that c. So let's look at it when we, there's a variable. When we have to find the antiderivative of x cubed, what we need to do is, you need to think about what you did to find a derivative. In order to find the derivative of a variable, you have to take the exponent, bring it to the front, multiply it, and subtract by 1. So when we have to find the antiderivative, we're going to work backwards. Instead of subtracting one from the exponent, you're going to add one to the exponent. And instead of multiplying, you're going to divide by that new exponent. 3 plus 1 is 4, so you're going to divide by 4. So that's going to give you x to the 4th over 4. And then remember, plus c. Now the good thing about finding antiderivatives is you're able to actually find the derivative and see if you're right. But if I wanted to find the derivative of this, bring this 4 over, so you get 4x subtract 1, 3 over 4, and that does give you, also, the derivative of c is just a number, which is 0, so you just left with 4x cubed over 4, 4 over 4 cancels out, so you're left with x cubed, and that's our original equation. So anytime you want to find an antiderivative of a variable, you're going to add 1 to the exponent, 3 plus 1 is 4, and divide by that new exponent, and that's your antiderivative. So now we're going to take a look at a couple examples. So we're going to find the antiderivative, remember the symbol means an integral, gives us a hint that we have to find the antiderivative of x to the fourth plus 6x squared plus 8 in respect to x. So what I like to do is I like to separate everything. x to the fourth respect to x plus, and what I'm going to tell you is that you need to always take this constant out so that you can just work with the variable and the exponent plus and then we can just do 8dx so we're going to find the integral the antiderivative of every single term separately so remember what do we do whenever you have a variable to an exponent add 1 to it so you're going to have x 4 plus 1 is 5 divide by that new exponent 5 now move on to the next one you know there's a 6 add 1 to the exponent divide by that new exponent Plus, what do we do whenever there's a constant? Just add that variable next to it. 8x plus c. Simplify if you're able to. Well, I can't simplify here, so I'm just going to have 1 fifth x to the fifth. 6 over 3 will give me a 2x cubed plus 8x plus c. And this is all equal to y, my original equation. Okay? And remember, you can find a derivative to see if you did it right. Now, what happens when there's a radical? Any time there's a radical, what you want to ask yourself is, what did you have to do to find this derivative? The first step calculus told you was, well, you need to change this, this radical into a rational exponent. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this to x to the 4 over 3. x to the 4 over 3, because I can't work a radical, so I'm going to change everything to a rational exponent. And of course, respect to x. So remember, it's still an exponent, so because it's an exponent, we're just going to add 1 to it. So you're going to get x, 4 over 3 plus 1, divided by that new exponent. So then you have to go, well, what is 4 over 3 plus 1? That's going to be 7 over 4. So then this is going to be x, 7 over 4, 
over 7 over 4 plus c. But the problem is, you don't really want a number over a fraction. So this is when you have to keep change flip. So technically you have x7 over 4, sorry, x to the 7 over 4, times, keep it, change it, flip it, 4 over 7, equals to 4x7 over 4, over 7 plus c. And this is your antiderivative. But instead of keep change flipping, there's actually a shortcut to it. If you just memorize that, you know you're going to flip this when you have to keep change flip. So this denominator of the bottom is going to just come to the top. So if you just memorize that this 4 is going to come up to here to the top and the, this 7 is going to stay in the bottom, you're going to just be able to just skip that keep chain flip it and just flip the, the bottom part to put that bottom number next to that x. And that's your antiderivative. So anytime you have it where you're working with a radical, what you want to do is change it to a rational exponent, add 1 to it, which is going to cause a fraction in the bottom, flip the fraction and just put that 4 up top and that 7 still remains on the bottom and that's your antiderivative. Now the good thing about antiderivatives is that we don't have to actually do an antiderivative of a quotient rule or a product rule or even a chain rule. We'll eventually have to do something with, which involves u substitution but till then all we know is that we can only find an antiderivative of x to a variable or a constant. So we'll look at this one. Well, this kind of looks like maybe a quotient rule is applied. But what we could do is anytime there's one term on the bottom, what you want to do is separate every single term so that you get 3x to the fourth over x squared minus 7x cubed over x squared plus 4x squared over x squared minus 6 over x squared. And this equation is in respect to x. So the reason why we are actually going to separate every single term is that we can simplify it. So that this is going to become x to the fourth over x squared. Remember, subtract the exponents, 4 minus 2, 2. So you're going to get 3x squared minus 7x plus 4. Now, I don't really want to keep this like this because I can't work. Remember how when you were doing derivatives, they told you never to find a derivative when x is on the bottom? So because we're trying to find antiderivative, same rules apply. You can't find antiderivative when x is on the bottom, so we need to bring this up. And the only way we can bring that up is by making that exponent a negative. So it's going to be minus 6x to the negative 2 in respect to x. So then, of course, you could separate everything. So I'm going to go ahead and separate everything. Take the constant out. You're left with x squared respect to x. Minus take the constant out. x dx plus 4 minus, take the constant out, x to negative 2, respect to x, and respect to x. So then you can go ahead and find every single one of them. Add 1 to the exponent, you get 3x cubed over 3. Add 1 to the exponent, minus 7x squared over 2, plus, it's just a constant, so add a variable to it, x minus 6. But what do we do if it's negative? Nothing changes, it stays the same just add 1 to the exponent. So you're going to get x to the negative 1 over negative 1. And then of course we're going to add a plus c, but we're just going to simplify our equation first So then and then add the plus c. So then now your next step is just simplify everything. 3 over 3 is just x cubed. You can't simplify 7 over 2, so keep it like that. Plus 4x. Now this is the part where we kind of have to just skip one more step. Negative 6 over negative 1, the sign is going to change. So you're going to be left with a plus 6. Now, I don't really want x to negative 1 on top. It's not written in proper terms. So what I'm going to do is anytime you have a negative exponent, bring it back down. 6 over x. This is our original equation. Plus a c. And that's our final answer. And of course, we can find an anti we can find our derivative of this equation to, get, to go backwards. So anytime you have an equation that's over a term, what I want you to do is simplify every single term and separate everything so that you get everything as a separate terms. Then simplify every, every exponent, and if you ever have an exponent on the bottom, make sure you bring it to the top. Okay. And then our last example is, what happens when we have to find a particular solution that satisfies the differential equation and the initial condition? What this means, you're going to be given your antiderivative. 
So you're going to be giving your derivative. But what they're going to ask us for is they're going to ask us for a particular solution. What that means is they don't want us to have an equation with a C in it anymore. They want us to find that C when, sorry, this is supposed to be f of 2 is equal to 10. What happens when f prime of 12x squared plus 4 and it passes through f of 2 equals to 10? So what we're going to do is we're going to solve for the C. So in order to actually find our fixed solution, we need to find an antiderivative, given that this right here is our initial condition. So we're going to go ahead and find the antiderivative of 12x squared plus 4 in respect to x. So then you can separate everything. So this is going to go ahead and give you 12x cubed over 3 plus 4x plus c. Simplify it. 4x cubed plus 4x plus c equals to y. This formula right here is what we call a general solution. Now the reason why it's a general solution is because this c could be any number. Any initial condition will change this general solution because it's going to change the c. So what they're trying to do is we're trying to find a particular solution given that our initial condition f of 2 and 10. So remember f of 2 is another way of saying x and a y passing through 2 comma 10. So what we're going to do is since this is x and this is y we're going to plug this x and y into our equation. 10 equals to 4 2 cubed plus 4 times 2 plus this c that we're trying to find. So then you work everything out, 10 equals to 32 plus 8 plus c. Combine again, 10 is equal to 40 plus c, c is equal to negative 30. So given that our derivative was 12x squared plus 4 and our, our original equation was passing through the point 2 comma 10, it helped us find our c which was equal to negative 30. So what we're going to do next is we're going to plug this c into our general solution so that you get y is equal to 4x cubed plus 4x minus 30 and now this is your answer and this is your particular solution. Okay? And you're only going to be asked um, to find a particular solution anytime you're given an initial condition. So they have to give you your derivative and they have to give you initial condition. That is the only way that we can actually go ahead and find the C. Because without the actual point, we'll never find that C and we'll just be left with a general solution. Alright? So, in this video, anytime they ask you to find an antiderivative, if they ever introduce this symbol right here, this integral symbol, it means that we have to apply an antiderivative, which means we're trying to work backwards. So anytime you have a variable, you're going to add 1 to your exponent, which gives you 3 and divide by that new exponent. And anytime you have to find an antiderivative of a number, just add that variable x and don't forget that plus c. And anytime you find this equation, this is called a general solution. Alright? Thanks for watching. Hope it helped.